out of this world adventure. Take off with your favorite. This is my follow up to the first video demonstrating how to get Retro Arch operating on your iPhone. So after seven days, you'll notice what happens. When you go to launch the app, you're going to press it. It's going to snapshot, going to snapshot, going to do that every time. This is the workaround that Mr. 7X has helped me figure out. So I'm going to, again, include the link in the description for where you can find the forum posts that I've been answering, asking the questions and getting great answers from these guys. So big shout out to them for helping me create this resource for you guys. So same resources, we're going to be using Impactor. We're going to be using the original IPA file that you used for RetroArch. And we are going to be using iPhone Box. So the first thing you want to do, connect your phone to your computer. Open up iPhone Box. Now, if you want to be cautious, which is never a bad idea, you're going to want to back up of what you're doing. We got iPhone Box up and running. Phones connected via USB to Lightning cable. We're going to go to App File Sharing. Retro Arch. And then technically you can just drag this folder to the desktop. So if you're not looking for specifics, that's going to work. Most important files that you're going to take away from this is going to be, it's not a bad idea to copy your config file, saves, states, system. Systems, of course, where we keep the BIOS file. So right now, I'm not particularly worried. So I'm just going to take the saves and the states and copy those locally to my desktop. Those are there. Let's verify where to go. Saves and states. Boom. Right there. Move those out of the way. So now I'm good to go. You're in a situation where your app's not opening. Go ahead. I don't know if this is necessary, but I would recommend force closing Retro Arch just to make sure it's not running in the background. We are going to open up the IPA file that you originally used. So again, remember it's important to keep track of that. So Retro Arch 136.IPA, that's the file I'm going to be using. And then we need Cydia Impactor. Launch that. Drag that over the top. It's going to ask you for your Apple ID. This is the time to input the spam account. Remember. It can't be an account using two-factor or two-step authentication. So let's enter that email in here. And password. We're going to be able to fast forward through this. This error, perfectly normal. We're going to see it every time. We're not worried about it. Once that's finished, you want to go into iPhone Box. We're going to remove the config file as well as the playlist file. If you don't really remove the config file, there's some confusion that takes place. It's a little bit weird. As well as the playlist, it's going to have a second set of all the games in your library, and half of those won't work. By doing this, when you launch the application, it's actually going to refresh itself and build those files that's necessary. So we're going to go into iPhone Box. And re remember, in case there's an issue, you have the backup already saved. App file sharing, retro arch. We're going to click the name. So we're going into config. We're going to view these differently. So this file, we can delete retro arch config. That's okay. We're going to go up a level. Next, we're looking at the playlist. So everything listed here, you're going to trash it. and then you're good to go. So just remember, in case you were to delete all this content that was there, all you would need to remember to put back is what goes in the downloads file, so the location of your games. Take a look at that. Your saves and your states, you're gonna copy the content there, and then in system, those are your BIOS files. Now remember, I have more here than are necessary, it's just because I was feeling like overkill. At this point, you're done, we can close it, and then we're going to move over to, the, we're going to transition to the iPhone. All right, so once on the iPhone, you want to make sure you go to Settings, General, Profiles and Device Management. Verify that what you have set up is still verified. So as long as you have that, you're good. We're going to open up the app. It's going to extract the assets, so we're not worried about that. That takes just a moment. The next thing you're going to do is select in the lower middle. And, we're, and we actually need to scan your, the directory for where the games are. So we're going to choose Scan Directory, choose that name at the top, Retro Arch, 
downloads, scan this directory. So it's going to take a moment. We're going to fast forward through that. Once it finishes, you'll be able to go back and you've got your list of names. I don't know what an empty is, but anyway, so now we can choose Super Nintendo, Super Mario RPG. We have no duplicates of the games and we can run it. Now, what's going to be most important is the file that you save your state in is only going to work with that original emulator. So for me, I remember that I'm using SNES 9X. If I select that, run it, what I can do is in here, I can choose load state, and it has the game running right there. So it's as if I haven't missed a single beat. This is going to be your solution for every seven days getting your retro arch refreshed so you can continue continue playing games if you have any questions post below also see the forums at libretro that should be able to keep you going thank you for watching